This is a California gray whale, approximately 40 feet long, weight 30 tons, symbol of an age when gargantuan creatures occupied planet Earth. A century ago, these great mammoths were almost made extinct. Today, through laws giving them rigid protection, they number several thousand. The summer feeding grounds of these monsters of the deep are in the waters of the Arctic Ocean and Bering Sea. Each year, as fall approaches and the waters become colder, their barnacle-coated hulks head south to their breeding grounds. They do not tarry. Their minds are on shallow havens far from man's interference. 6,000 miles they travel across the Pacific. Down the western shores of North America they parade, past the coast of California, the deserts and dunes of Baja California, to little known Scammon's Lagoon, where there is warm weather and calm waters, the main breeding ground of the gray whale. Some of these uncommon gray mammoths prefer solitude as they journey south, possibly thinking of frolicking lazily in the sunlit blue channels and shoals of their winter home. But others travel in groups, as if discussing the days ahead, or possibly selecting mates. And this is their destination, the end of a 6,000-mile journey, Scammon's Lagoon, where warm Pacific winds whip the shore. This little-known area of land and water, 30 miles long, 7 miles wide, rarely visited by man, is the breeding ground of the greys. It is here, in the blue water surrounded by the Mexican desert, that Operation Heartbeat took place. For many years, Dr. Paul Dudley White, the noted heart specialist, has been recording the heartbeats of many different animals in the hope that, through this pioneer research, knowledge would be gained that might lead toward the conquering of man's greatest enemy, malfunction of the heart. The human heart is about the size of two fists, while the heart of a gray whale weighs more than 250 pounds and is larger than a bushel basket. Yet, man and whale are both mammals, and it was hoped that by recording the world's most ponderous creature, some undisclosed secret of the mammalian heart might be revealed. And so, the challenge. Could a satisfactory cardiograph of a whale's heart be obtained? Operation Heartbeat began in 1956, when Dr. Paul Dudley White and his colleagues first visited this lagoon. The research into heart pulsations was aided by the National Geographic Society. The Douglas Aircraft Company also cooperated. Donald Douglas made available his company's diesel craft, the Dorado, which was equipped with electronic devices developed from years of experience in guided missiles and high-speed flight. The first expedition reached Scammon's Lagoon on February 4, 1956. The tools of research were crossbows and hand-thrown harpoons with barbed heads trailing insulated wires connected to a small telemetering boat. An approach was attempted by the motorboat Baena, but a crafty gray quickly submerged, went under the boat, and hit the Baena with its tail flukes. Water gushed into the Baena, and hungry sharks sensed a meal. A rescue boat arrived from half a mile away, and towed the boat to the Dorado, where the Baena's wounds were patched. Although not completely successful, the 1956 venture supplied valuable experience, which led to improved equipment and techniques. In 1957, these men would try again, but this time the approach would be by helicopter. Again, the telemetering boat light enough to be towed by electric wires from harpoon heads lodged in the whale's blubber, would send heartbeat signals while skimming in the mammal's wake. 
A firing platform was mounted on the helicopter. And the harpoons would be fired by two high-powered rifles to penetrate the hide and blubber of the gray whales. Donald Douglas and his son would fire the harpoons from the helicopter. Prior to embarking for the winter home of the Greys, the equipment was checked out. If a serious malfunction occurred in the hidden lagoon off Baja, California, the entire operation might be jeopardized. Repeated trials were made off the coast of California, and many a resident of Palos Verdes must have wondered at the sight of a man firing harpoons from a helicopter. And then, dropping a small orange boat with a bobbing antenna. Again, the National Geographic Society and the Douglas Aircraft Company cooperated in Operation Heartbeat. This time, however, the team was augmented by experts from the U.S. Army's aviation branch and officials of the Mexican government. After months of planning, of testing equipment, and of assembling the necessities of life, the second research effort was about to begin. All was in readiness on February 5, 1957. The Douglas Aircraft Company helicopter was the first to depart for the winter home of the California Grays. The Douglas DC-3 took off the following morning. The Dorado would not be far behind. Formerly a Coast Guard patrol boat, the Dorado was roomy and elaborately equipped with the latest in navigational devices. She would cruise past the marching peaks and mesas of Baja California and enter waters known only to a few seamen and yachtsmen. And this was the destination, Scammon's Lagoon. Ten miles from the lagoon was a sun-baked salt bed called Black Warrior, an excellent runway for the DC-3 and the US Army and Douglas helicopters. The military personnel were from the Army's Electronic and Communication Test Center in Arizona. Among the first arrivals at this remote and lonely spot was Donald Douglas, Jr. The DC-3 would soon return with the other members of the expedition. Representatives of the government of Mexico were on hand to greet the advance party. Supplies to be airlifted to Scammon's Lagoon were unloaded at Black Warrior. A campsite was of immediate concern. And so, to scout the twisting channels, the wide shoals and tidal sand flats, never accurately sounded or marked with buoys. Few visitors ever come to the desolate shores of Scammon's Lagoon. This little known body of water, no more than half the size of California's Salton Sea, would be home for these pioneers for many days. Somewhere in this deserted area, a camp would have to be set up. Somewhere in this haven of the greys, man would conduct research of the heart. This was the site, the area from which the reluctant specimens would be studied. Supply would be transported by helicopter from Black Warrior to the campsite on the lagoon. And the supplies were many. For on this heart-hunting expedition, men must be fed, and protection and warmth must be ample. This sheltered desert lagoon 
provided none of the comforts of home. All day, men and supplies were airlifted to the campsite. In all, 22,000 pounds of food and equipment were brought to the site for the 32-man expedition. Much of it had arrived earlier by towboat. There was electronic gear, telemetry and recording equipment, gasoline-powered units, fuel for the helicopters, barrels and bottles of water, and other essential items. The immediate objective was to set up camp and prepare for tomorrow. From sunup to sunset, the copters carried out their airlift mission. Moving 22,000 pounds of cargo in a single day called for efforts by everyone. There were no exceptions. There was a moment to marvel at the sunset, but only a moment, for supplies kept coming in and tomorrow would herald the first day of existence on the barren shores of Scammon's Lagoon. With the dawn, crates were opened and equipment checked. The Dorado would be here soon. So would the DC-3 with its distinguished passengers. Beyond the sand dunes, the Dorado is sighted. And the Douglas helicopter leaves to help guide it through the twisting channels and tricky shoals of Scammon's Lagoon. Lagoon, where a century ago, the shouts of harpooners and oarsmen echoed the success or failure in the pursuit of the greys. The DC-3 buzzed the campsite. Aboard were the motivators of this experiment. Douglas, Dr. Paul Dudley White, and their associates, by helicopter from Black Warrior, charged the atmosphere with the knowledge that soon the research effort would be underway. Before the shallow waters were scoured for the elusive greys, an inspection of the campsite was the order of business. Were the men comfortable and provisions sufficient? Also, the presenting of credentials to officials of the Mexican government. And there was planning to do. Where to spy on the gray mammoths of the sea. Food there must be. Engineers and scientists at one time or another attempted to concoct palatable victuals. It is reported many a can opener failed to survive the rigorous treatment rendered by these invaders of Scammon's Lagoon. The clear water of the lagoon was calm with the dawn, but not for long. To the gray whales, this was another day for play and perhaps to look at the intruders of their private waters who came by boat, plane, and helicopter. And on the land, there was activity.
for this was the first full day in which to scout the greys and to make sure the equipment had withstood the airlift from Santa Monica. Donald Douglas Jr. checked the harpoons and the various types of harpoon heads to be used. And Donald Douglas made sure the velocity of the guns would be sufficient to penetrate the massive hulk of the greys. The intricate electronic components of the communication system were tested. So was the electrocardiograph, which, it was hoped, would record the whale's heartbeat in the same manner as it records the human heart. And the most important member of the cast, the heartbeat boat, which would transmit the pulsations. Among the most concerned was Dr. White. Now to search these waters, to catch the whales unaware, for never before had the whirling blades of a copter stirred the warm, humid air of this remote lagoon. This was, in a sense, a council of war. The whales were out there, not as an enemy, but nevertheless, targets for the research effort. Aboard the Dorado, equipment was ready. There they were, adult whales of mighty spout. Mother whales with close following calves. Pairs or trios of whales courting playfully. first mission was readied. The guns were mounted and the harpoons positioned. The harpoon heads were constructed to provide maximum electrical conductivity and to eventually dislodge themselves without severe pain or serious injury to the whale. The heartbeat boat, its maze of tubes and wires protected by a waterproof cover, was given a last minute inspection and then attached to the helicopter. The point of culmination had been reached. The theories, planning, preparations, the accumulation of scientific equipment, and the days of testing that equipment, all this was accomplished for these next few days. February 10, 1957, the Douglas helicopter rose from the sandy floor of Scammon's Lagoon. Ahead were the Greys, whose cooperation in this venture was most uncertain. This lone adult whale, with its gleaming back showing white barnacle patches, was suspicious of the whirring helicopter blades and maneuvered as though to hide in Scammon's wide expanse. Aboard the Dorado and at stations on the land, recording and radio crews were standing by to catch the first impulses from the target. A pickup boat moved into the area to recover the heartbeat boat after the operation. For a measurable signal to reach the recording instruments, both harpoons would have to enter the target as far apart as possible. The surfacing whale seldom exposes its entire length, and the guns must fire before the whale submerges. A target was sighted in. dropped, its antenna triggered into position. From the Baena, it looked successful. 
but at the recording stations there was disappointment. Contact had not been made. The telemetering boat was functional, but something had gone wrong. Possibly the harpoon heads had not become embedded. Now the task was to retrieve the telemetering boat, pull in the nylon insulated wires, and examine the harpoon heads. Donald Douglas signals failure to the helicopter crew. The heartbeat boat was towed ashore, her delicate instruments to be made ready for the next attempt. An impromptu conference concerned itself with why the first effort failed. Tomorrow would be another day. day, beginning at sunrise, the whales were pursued again. During the expedition, 11 missions were flown. On all of them, the army copter was aloft. Should an emergency occur, it would aid in rescue operations. This giant gray thrust low set eyes above the surface, plunged and the chase was on. The helicopter moved into position for a decisive shot. A hit. Both harpoons were embedded in the whale. Now it was up to the telemetry boat. This time there was contact, and the delicate vibrations picked up by the harpoon heads were transmitted to the Dorado by the heartbeat boat. Later, the vibrations now transformed into visible irregular lines were studied. Only a heart specialist would know if they represented intrinsic action of individual muscles, either of the heart or elsewhere in the body of the whale. And on the bulletin board that day, it was possible to write, contact made. On one of the most successful missions, Donald Douglas occupied the firing platform and manned the guns. Whirling blades showered dust over the camp. Then came the search. The copter remained at low altitude, and the ballena was standing by. A target was sighted and was centered in the sights of the harpoon guns. But the wary gray would not cooperate. A pair of whales suddenly surfaced. Perhaps one of them would remain topside long enough for the copter to attain close quarters. giant lunged forward, and the telemetry boat was quickly dropped. The signals received aboard the Dorado were strong, an acknowledgement of the tensile integrity of the wire leads as the whale continued its effort to escape.
Every 10 seconds, the telemetering boat was sending a time signal, which was recorded on the pulse tracings at the receiving stations. It was an exceptionally good contact, one of five obtained. For over an hour, the harpoons remained in the whale. It was the longest continuous contact of the expedition, supplying tracings for analytical studies for months to come. On February 16th, Operation Heartbeat was concluded on schedule. Although the expedition didn't achieve the overall goals desired, much valuable data were obtained. Aside from the technical phase, Operation Heartbeat provided data for future guidance in the development of equipment, techniques, and approach methods. In the continuing search into mysteries of the heart, these men plan to return at some future date. These waters undoubtedly will again feel the prow of the Dorado, and the air, the blades of helicopters. And one of the largest mammals of them all will make their annual visit to Scammon's Lagoon. As in all research efforts, time is needed. The conclusive answers about mammalian physiology may well lie in these shallow waters, in the gray giants who know this lagoon as their winter breeding grounds.